it's a problem with the use of language. Mm -hmm. um, race is a social concept that's not a scientific one, e even though it was attributed to scientists early on, like people like Linnaeus trying to define uh, different races and, and different species. Uh, it, it's impossible to talk about race without using racist terminology and classification terminology. At least I haven't worked out how to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we all uh, evolved out of a group uh, that migrated out of Africa uh, for the most part. Um, and so we all have common origins. And there's not, if we could sequence the genome of everybody on the planet right now and compare them, uh, there, there would no, be no bright lines, in, particularly uh, with characteristics that people associate with uh, simplistically with race, skin color, et cetera. Uh, we're part of a continuum. So it can't be a scientific definition. Uh, and the problem is when people try to apply science to sort out these social definitions, it all falls apart. Uh, and it's a real problem and it's something we write about quite a bit in terms of race-based medicine because several physicians want to practice and some pharmaceutical companies support this practice of practicing medicine based on the skin color of the patient that comes in to see you. So it, it, it's not rational and, and uh, um, several of us, as you said, did speak, speak out when Watson said the, uh, that, that there was these absolute determinations based on intelligence. He, he since retracted his statements, but you know, he's certainly not the first, I'm sure he won't be the last to say such things. So these ideas are out there, and I think as we get more and more genomes done with more phenotypic, uh, phenotypic characterization, I think this will become very clear to everybody. But we're, we're fighting these various notions just in the intelligent medical community right now mm -hmm. of, as I say, uh, uh, drug companies that think they have drugs that work so much better on African-American populations that they should prescribe them for them for hypertension mm -hmm. uh, and that you should practice medicine based on the color of skin. Well, then how do we, um, and as ordinary as lay people, how do we reconcile that with simply, you know, an indicator, for instance, that uh, some populations are more susceptible to diabetes or sickle cell anemia or, mm -hmm. you know, how do we relate those two? to what you're seeing now? Well, we, we have to get past the simplistic uh, visual acuity measurements because they're pretty random uh, as any real indicator. Um, so it is not the case that certain populations are more susceptible to certain diseases or they're well, more likely for, to occur there? For example, take uh, hypertension or prostate cancer. Uh, African American males certainly have that to a higher percentage than so-called Caucasian males. Um, but it's not anywhere near absolute. It's uh, very easy either side of 50% a little bit. And so maybe if you, know, you, you would improve the odds by 5% or something by prescribing something based on that skin color. What you want to know, and there's genes now associated with increased risk of prostate cancer, uh, that will go across what other people would define as racial lines. If you're worried about prostate cancer, you want to know what genetic changes you have that might give you that risk. It's irrelevant what your skin color is. Uh, if you're having hypertension, you want to know what the genetic determinants that you have for hypertension so you can get proper treatment. Again, there it's irrelevant what the skin color is. Yes, any population, and, and so the, uh, the, the population with the highest incidence of type 2 diabetes are the Pima Indians. The population on this planet with the second highest incidence are the Saudis because they do a lot of uh, first cousin marriages. They have these basic tribes that they did a lot of inbreeding within the tribes. They have tremendous incidence of genetic disease. You can take any populations when there's a lot of inbreeding, they will start to resemble each other a lot more and they will have a lot more genetic disease. But type 2 diabetes is not unique in any way to the Saudi. So just knowing somebody was from Saudi Arabia, you wouldn't say, oh, they're going to have type 2 diabetes. So w mm -hmm. we have to get past these crude indicators that have come out of folklore and bad science and bad medicine to get to the point where we can really define things based on what is associated with the disease. And that's changes in the genetic code in many instances.